Okay, so Seed Studio kindly sent me one of these ice tower coolers for the Raspberry Pi 4, and uh, I've been really impressed with it. It is super quiet, and the cooling properties are amazing. So there's a couple of configurations you can do with this. So this is as it comes. I'll get rid of, you've got a couple of spare heat pads, uh, and these seem to be reusable. They're not very tacky, uh, and so they just go in between the CPU and the bottom of the fan. I've also got the instruction book there, and I'll show some close-ups of of some of the setup and the box screwdriver. So if we have a look, closer look, you can see the pins that I'm using are the bottom row and it's pins uh, from the right, one and three. If I want this to be quieter in operation, so this is currently running at uh, five volts. So if I plug it in, obviously the fan at five volts will be slightly faster and it changes color really, it's really relaxed the way it changes through and cycles through the colors. But it also looks really nice uh, on different angles when it's changing color. Uh, there you go, the way that it goes through the grill. Um, but the main thing about it is obviously how well it cools. So if I wanted to do this with three volts, I pull this off and I move this pin back one. So it's basically the, the first pin that you can see. I'll move that back. So now if I go in closer, you can see on the top row, it's on the right, uh, number one, and on the front row, it's uh, number three. And that's gonna give me three volts and it makes it even quieter. So let's do an audio test. I'll just put my mic next to it. So that was three volts and I can't, I can't hear at all from where I am just, just behind the camera. Uh, so let's unplug that and change it to five volts. Plug it back in again. Now I can hear that, but it's it's very quiet in here. There's no one around, and it and it and it is super quiet. I can just about hear it. It's certainly not loud at all. And the direction of airflow is through the aluminium, so it's it's basically sucking it through, and that's what's keeping it cool. But they don't you don't feel a lot of airflow, I guess, because it's going straight into this into these fins. You don't feel a lot coming through, but the cooling properties are amazing. I I can't believe how much cooler this is. It's definitely the coolest I've had a Pi operating. Uh, even with overclocking. So you can see these little sort of copper pipes uh, going from, so there's a plate with the pad on the CPU, then there's these copper pipes that take the heat up, and then there's all these fins, and obviously the fan is blowing straight through. But I do love it, it, it is great. And on the bottom you've got this Perspex. Um, but uh, obviously, there because that's only doing the CPU, if you did want to get even cooler with your Pi, uh, and you can just about see it in there, so the CPU is just under there, uh, if you wanted to go cooler again, uh, someone had given me a tip, which was to use it with the rack, the 52 pi rack that I'd been sent. So I've got this. Uh, now, I haven't needed any extra cooling at all. It hasn't been an issue. Uh, you can see here this rack, uh, which I think Seed Studio probably sell as well. I got it from uh, given to me by 52 pi. Uh, you can put this little SD card adapter here uh, which means that you've still got access to the SD card slot because that would be on the other side. Uh, and it would go in here, but as you can see, if I put it in, it's the wrong way around, and if I turn it around this way, it's sticking out a bit because this post blocks it. But the reason it would be even better in this for extreme cooling is because the fan would then blow air across the pie. So you can see there, if I tilt it up, the fan is pulling the air uh, basically going that direction uh, and so it's going right across the board which is cooling all of the other components as well so if you want to get it even better I also thought maybe there was a way so let's get rid of this so Seed Studio also sent me this case which I've reviewed separately because you can use this on its own just with the pie inside it but this is also compatible with the ice tower cooler um, and I haven't worked out quite which way to do it but uh, basically the way this connects to the pie, you've got these like copper standoffs uh, and then there's this sort of steel frame that keeps it in place, keeps everything nice and solid. I mean it feels super solid, there, there's no issue with that at all, it feels really really good. Um, but uh, I think it would be nicer to have uh, a little bit of surround around here. Uh, so it must be, yeah so I've got this on, <laughs> this is on upside down because I can see the GPIO pins is on the other side but uh, so I need to have a look at that and see 
if I'm either going to do that and put it in this case, which I'm tempted to, uh, or whether I pop it on the top of this one. And the way I can do it with this one is literally just to take out this top bar. So there's a couple of screws. So that's one. Because it doesn't, it doesn't need that top bar for stability. There you go, so now I've cleared some space. So if I turn that around, that means that I can just put this straight on the top uh, and that would actually screw, there are screw holes in the Perspex here to screw the Pi directly to it. And the Perspex is only a slightly thicker than this, so it's definitely gonna work with this. Um, but that combo of having the fan blowing it across and having this, I think it's going to be amazing. So in a future video, I will see how far I can go with the overclock. Although I don't really think that um, more cooling is needed. I think this is probably enough for the overclock that the Pi will go to. So the stock Pi is 1500. Uh, I get it to 2147 on a regular basis. But I did do a video recently at 2.3, but it was unstable. Although with the silicon lottery, it could be that my 2 gig Pi isn't as good at overclocking as maybe my 4 or my 8 gig Pi, because I have had 2.250, which I think was stable. But I did see that Everything Computers had a video recently, and uh, he did some video rendering, and he got faster speeds at 2 gigahertz. So it could be that the Pi, even though it's kept cool enough, doesn't go beyond a certain limit uh, before it starts to become unstable. So I'm going to do some tests with that. I thought I'd use Handbrake and I would uh, convert a file and see how that goes. So let's get it plugged in anyway. I think we've seen enough of how it looks, but it looks great. It looks it looks amazing at night and I love the way the colours go through those fins. It really is very nice. So I'm going to leave it at the 5 volt and plug it in. Okay, so it's been running for a while now. You can see the video says 48 minutes uh, and it's a lovely and cool 39 degrees, 40 degrees. Uh, if I open terminal and do uh, nano boot config .txt, you can see that my overclocking settings are uh, over voltage of six, 2147 on the CPU and 700 on the GPU. Uh, so that's running nicely. If I also do uh, Neo fetch just to show you various things about it. It always misreports the clock speed on the fetch uh, when you go to the higher speeds and it's something to do with the uh, the kernel update. But uh, as you can see here, my operating system is running at 1920 by 1080. I'm using Raspberry Pi OS, the 32-bit version, and uh, it's been up and running for 50 minutes now. So I thought what I'd do is, now I reckon this would work absolutely fine without the fan. Uh, but what I thought I'd do is run it for say 10 minutes running this same video because this video is my longest video and it runs for an hour and a half. Let's give it 10 minutes at 3 volts. So I'm going to unplug it while it's on um, the GPIO pin. I know that's probably not the right thing to do but right so I can hear my fan has gone off now and also the lights have gone off. So I'm plugging it back in. So I'm now running at 3 volts and I need to actually physically look at the fan because I can't yeah, it's that quiet, and there's a helicopter going over, that I can't actually hear it running, but it is running at three volts. So let's see what happens, because I reckon it stays around about 38, 40, uh, all the way through, and uh, and it's been very stable at that, it just dropped down to 37. It's, it's actually better at three volts, because it's using less power, <laughs> maybe. So let's uh, leave it as it is, give it 10 minutes, and then see what temperature it's at, and then, I'll do a test without the fan on at all. Stealth mode. Okay. Okay, so that's 10 minutes later, and uh, let's have a look at it. So 40 degrees at the moment, 39 degrees. It has been running around 38 at different times as well. So let's just do Neo Fetch again, just to show. Yeah, it's been running for an hour and four minutes now. Uh, and so this is running at three volts. Uh, so it is, I mean, I, I think it's pretty much silent. I can't hear it at all. Actually, I can hear it. If I, if I go close to it, uh, it's it's there, but it's it's certainly not very loud at all. It's certainly not at all obtrusive. So let's unplug it completely and have it running completely passive. So I've, I'm unplugging the red and the black. Again, don't try this at home. Don't unplug GPIO pins when it's running. But uh, for the purpose of this test, it's useful. If I put my finger on top of the aluminium heatsink, uh, there's hardly any temperature there at all. 
any of it, it just it just feels like barely above room temperature. Um, so it, it does do a great job uh, of keeping this cool. So let's leave it as it is, give it another 10 minutes, and then maybe have a look at playing some games or something. Okay, so sometime later, what was that? One hour and 10 minutes was before. So now it's been on for nearly an hour and a half. Um, and uh, the temperature is definitely higher. There is no fan operating, so that is to be expected. But a Pi overclocked to 2147 running at 54 degrees is very acceptable. That That is excellent. So if you want it, if you don't want the lights, uh, if you don't want it to be making any noise, then you can perfectly well use this without any active cooling at all. Uh, so let's close that down. And uh, as I mentioned before let's let's maybe try a bit of gaming what have i got on here i think i've got PPSSPP is quite a good test just plug in my controller okay so let's have uh five minutes of just riding around i don't know why it says 15 fps actually is is this another thing of the two gig pi not being able to handle it quite as well so let's drop that down to let's get out of full screen mode I wonder if that will play better. This might be another thing I found that the 2 gigabyte isn't as good on PPSSPP because this is running at a low resolution. Let's have that car, that looks nice. Lucky it wasn't locked. Oh, bit slow down there. Again, this is not about. Uh, this is not about how well the game's running, this is just me trying to hammer it a bit by using something that is a bit more intensive. Yeah, it definitely doesn't... So, so again, nothing to do with the fan, but uh, GTA doesn't run as well on PPSSPP on the 2 gig Pi. So I've done lots of videos on this and definitely have better performance. Okay, so it's been running now for probably about 10 to 15 minutes and uh, and it's doing really well. I forgot to set my uh, watch to say how long it's been going, but I've definitely done more than the five minutes I was going to do. And uh, it doesn't seem to be getting any hotter. In fact, it's just got cooler. It's 52 now. Uh, a lot of the time it was running at 54. But, uh, but yeah, happy with that. So uh, I hope this all helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.